Okay, it's Mr. Kerbal here. I am back with my year four recommendation from Miss Jermack from our Grange Library, our wonderful Grange Librarian. Anyway, I'm looking quite forward to reading this. It's Emily Sparks and the Friendship Fiasco. So already I like the name, Emily Sparks. I mean, because sparky person is like somebody's full of energy and everything. like that. But the Friendship Fiasco, well, that I mean, we see that. A lot of times, like, friends are, like, the best. But then things can go wrong in friendship, like a play in the playground, a playtime, and all that kind of stuff. So let's see it. Also, Kathy Cassidy. I used to love Kathy Cassidy books. I used to read them with my daughter. So this is a recommendation by Kathy Cassidy. So that's pretty good. Okay, by Ruth Fitzgerald. Here are the, here's the contents page. Oh, she's dedicated it to Dali and Eddie, Edie for Endless Inspiration. Okay, so we're going to go on to the first chapter, Worries, Whales, and Wavy Cats. Hmm. Chapter one, Monday evening. You're feeling so excited. You're in a happy world. And all because you have a lovely baby girl. Best wishes, journey, and family with a kiss. So let's keep going. No idea who they are. The baby now has 16 cards, which is four more than I got for my birthday. This is what they say on the front. 11 say it's a girl. We know that. Three say baby girl. We know that too. One says new baby. They probably bought the card early. And one says it's a boy from great auntie Audrey. <laughs> Bonkers. I can't believe mum put the baby boy card up. She says it's funny. Confusing more like. It's bad enough the baby not having a name yet. She's four days old now. Gran says you only get two weeks. Soon she will be illegal. Me and Gran are getting quite concerned. I've tried to explain to mum and dad they could be arrested if they don't decide on a name soon, but they're both a bit stressy at the moment. Dad says they've got sleep deprivation because the baby keeps waking up at night. Probably because she's wondering what her name is. I don't suppose they've considered that she might be having nightmares about going to school and just being called girl. She'll have to walk into class and everyone will say, it's a girl, it's a girl, or it's a boy if great Auntie Audrey's involved. And she won't be able to tell her parents because they'll be in prison for not naming their child. Of course, they did manage to give me a name. Eleven years ago, they decided to call me. Wait for it. It's so exciting. Emily. I mean, really, I could understand if I was child number eight or something and they'd run out of ideas. But their first ever baby and that's what they came up with? Talk about lack of imagination. There are six Emilys in my school. Emily S, me, Emily G, Emily C, Big Emily B, Small Emily B, and other Emily B. Some people call her Weird Emily B, but I don't. Having the same name as everyone else is a total nightmare. If we're in the playground and someone calls... Emily, six different games have to come to a stop while everyone looks around to see which Emily is being called. As we also have two Emmas, if someone is stupid enough to just shout M, you may as well give up on break for the rest of the afternoon. Mind you, I don't think weird names are much good either. Troika O'Mahony Turpin in year three probably spends more actual time telling people how to spell her name than she spends eating hot dinners. Actually, she has packed lunch, but you know what I mean. So to help mum and dad along, me and Gran are making a list of interesting but not freaky names for them to choose from. Gran's choice, Gran's choices, Diana, dead princess, Kate, alive princess, Carol, weather girl on breakfast telly, my choices, Bella, my best friend, Hermione, yes, I'm very good at spelling, Harry, just in case there's been a mix-up and great auntie Audrey, is right after all. But still they haven't chosen. It's getting desperate. Gran just che just texted me. What about Cheryl? She must be watching the X Factor again. She only really watches the X Factor and Poirot. And I already said no to putting Agatha on the list. I do actually have a secret name for the baby. I call her Yoda. He's in Star Wars. If you have a if you have a dad like mine, you'll know all about Star Wars. If you don't know, just imagine a small, bald, wrinkly sort of person. And that's him. Yoda, I mean, not my dad. Though he's getting there. Anyway, my baby sister is totally Yoda-ish. 
By now, you are probably thinking that I have a lot to cope with for an 11-year-old. But there are a lot worse things than nameless babies and useless parents. Like the really, utterly, completely bad thing, which is my best friend Bella has moved to Wales. Yes, Wales, as in another country, unless you live there, of course, then it's not. Her mum and dad have bought a farmhouse and are going to make goat's cheese. She's been gone a whole three weeks. I've talked to her on the phone once or twice, but mum says it's very expensive to keep phoning abroad. Life without your best friend is like chips without tomato sauce or pasta without pesto or even sushi without rice, I suppose, depending what level of food your family is on. My family is still really at chips level, though my mum is always trying to push us more in the pesto direction. Before Bella went, she gave me a little white china cat with a wavy paw. It's a Japanese good luck symbol. I keep asking it to bring Bella back, but so far it doesn't seem to be doing its job very well. Every evening at six o'clock, I meet up with Bella on the computer for a chat. I tell her how boring it is here, and she tells me how cool it is in Wales. Tonight's chat. Bella says, hi, Wales is cool. It's raining. Emily says, hi, boring at school without you. Dad fell asleep and forgot to pick me up, so I had to have a lift home with Miss, Mrs. Lovetofts. Bella says, bad luck. What's happening at school? Bella, Emily says, Emily Langer got in trouble for snapping Susanna's dolphin rubber in half. Bella says, oh my gosh, I love that rubber. Emily says, I know, it was the best rubber in class. But I don't really care because I don't like Susanna. Bella says, oh yes, I forgot. Emily says, you're forgetting about me already. Can't you get your mum and dad to change their minds and come back? Bella says, they love it. Tomorrow, goats are arriving and I started my new school today. Emily says, oh no. Bella says, it was okay. Everyone is Welsh and guess what? I'm sitting by a girl called Emily. Emily says, no, I'm sitting by Wavy Cat. I put him on your side of the table every day. Bella says, here is a so cute picture of a bunny to cheer you up. Emily says, oh, so cute. I wait for a few minutes, but Bella doesn't say anything else. I should have ended with a question. Okay, yes, chapter two, Echo Disaster. So I'm not sure um, how I'm feeling about the book. I wonder how you're feeling. Are you enjoying it? Do you want to hear a bit more? I think Emily's a bit funny, but she also sounds a bit... Um, a bit... Um, sarcastic, I don't know. Negative? Well, we'll see. Okay, so we'll carry on with that later.